back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. A while back, I showed you how to make a hyperlink notebook in GoodNotes, and since then, I've gotten a few questions on how to export and share your hyperlink documents. Well, today I'm going to show you how to create a hyperlink planner for the month in Keynote that can be exported as a PDF and keep the hyperlinks. And the only thing you need is your iPad and Apple Pencil. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is open the Keynote app. Once the app is open, use the plus sign to create a new presentation. Select choose a theme and I'm going to use the basic white theme for my background. Next, we're going to set up the size of the planner. Tap on the drop down next to presentation, then presentation options and presentation setup. At the bottom, select slide size and custom. I'm going to create a portrait planner using 1066 by 1380, but feel free to play around with the dimensions to get the size that you want. Now select done on your keyboard and again at the top right. Select the page in the left hand sidebar. In the pop-up toolbar, select edit slide layout. This will take you to your master slide area. We are going to delete all the slides in this area. When you select the first slide to delete, you will get a prompt to replace the slide layout. Scroll to the bottom and select the blank page. Now delete all the slides with anything on them. I'm going to use this first slide to create my background. Using the plus sign, I'm going to add a square and use the dots on the edges to shape it into a strip that I can use across the bottom of the page. I'm going back to the plus sign and this time I'm going to select text. The paintbrush icon on your toolbar is what you'll want to use for customization. This is where you'll go if you want to change any of the color of the objects that you add to your template or if you want to format your text. I'm going to change the size of the text to 30 and this is the text I'm going to use for my tabs. The first tab is going to be for the month, then a vision board, a notes page, then weeks one through five for the weekly planning templates. I'm creating a simple planner, but feel free to get as creative as you want on this part. I'm just going to show you all the basics that you need. I'm going to move the text to the black strip that I added at the bottom, and I'm going to change the color of the text to white, and now I have a navigation bar for the planner. This is the page that I'll use for all of my templates moving forward. So I'm going to duplicate this page and create my weekly template. Any repetitive pages that you want to create for your planner need to be done in the master slides. This will save you a lot of time when you're putting your planner together. I'm going to name this page weekly. Using the page labels will be helpful if you're adding a lot of templates to your planner. I'm going to use the grid to create boxes for each day of the week. This layout will allow for detailed daily planning. Using the paintbrush, I'm going to darken the lines so the grids will show up better for the camera. Usually I use the one point for lines. For this template, I need three boxes across the top and two going down. I'm going to stretch the boxes to fit the page and I'm also going to use the paintbrush to remove the lines on both sides and at the bottom. Still using the paintbrush, I'm going to format the text for the cells. Make sure that you select the whole grid and not just the individual cells so formatting will be applied to the whole grid. Now I'm going to add in the days of the week for the weekly template. Since there are only six boxes, I'm going to add a line and split the box for Saturday and add Sunday in the bottom half. Now select done at the top left and this will take you out of the master slide area. Now let's create the monthly layout using this blank slide. Start by adding a table by selecting the grid or the table icon at the top. 
Create a seven by five grid and this should be enough for the calendar layout. I'm gonna go in and darken the lines on my calendar grid so that you can see them better. I'm gonna adjust the table to fit the slide. Here you can make this calendar as big or as small as you would like. My calendar is not gonna take up the whole page because I wanna add some sections down at the bottom. So once I have this calendar in position, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add another grid for the list that I wanna put at the bottom. The section at the bottom, I'm gonna create a grid that's one column and five rows. And I wanna use this to have a place to write my monthly goals in. So this is gonna be the first list. And then once I get this formatted correctly, the way I want it, I'm going to duplicate that list and add another one to the right side and I'm going to use that one for the goals. I'm going to add in the text for the days of the week and I'm going to use the size 25 for the days. Here you can decide whether you want your calendar to have a Monday start or a Sunday start. I'm going to go with the Sunday start. I've also formatted the text so that it would be centered. So when I move it to the spot that I wanna have it in, when I pull the sides of the text box to match the calendar rows, it'll put the text in the middle. So it'll be lined up in the center of your rows. Now that I have all my days in place, I'm gonna to go to the bottom and add labels in for those two sections. So the first section is gonna be for my goals and I've copied and pasted the text boxes that I used up top so the font will be the same and it's already all capitalized. I'm gonna type in goals, then I'm gonna go back to the paintbrush and I'm gonna line this up to the left. I want the labels on my rows to be to the left. Once I have goals formatted the way that I want it, I'm gonna copy that text box and I'm gonna paste it on the next section and I'm gonna change that to task. I want to do a checklist for the two sections at the bottom so I'm going to add a square and I'm going to change the color to white and I'm going to use this white box to put a divide between the lines so it creates a checkbox to the left side of the column. Now that I have all of my labels in place, I'm gonna go in and add the dates for my calendar. I'm gonna format the grid so that the numbers appear at the top right of each box. Now that I'm completely done with my calendar, I'm gonna show you another useful feature of Keynote. I'm gonna select the paintbrush and then over at the top, you'll see a range. If you select a range, it gives you an option to lock. This locks whatever you have highlighted in place so you can't accidentally move it. So once I lock the calendar, it doesn't matter if I try to select it or I write on top of it, none of the dates or the grid will move on the calendar. Now I'm just gonna go in and add a title for my month. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type out 07 and I wanna change this to a light gray. So it'll be kind of in the background. And then I'm gonna add in a calligraphy font and write out July. All right, that's it for the calendar. Now I'm gonna use the plus sign at the bottom left to add the blank page, which is our background. And I'm gonna use this to create a vision board. I'm just gonna add the vision board title to this page and leave the rest of it blank.
I'm going to copy the title and add it to another blank template for the notes page. When you copy and paste to a new page, it will paste the object in the same place as the previous page. You can leave the note page blank or you can add a grid to create a line notebook page. I'm going to use a one column grid with 20 rows and stretch it to fit the page. I'm also going to remove the lines on both sides of the grid to give it a notebook look. To complete the planner, now I'm going to use the plus sign and add in five of the weekly templates. I'm going to paste the title from the vision board so I can make sure that my titles are all in the same place. Now that we have all the templates in place for the planner, it's time to add in the hyperlinks. The easiest way to hyperlink your planner is to go back to the master slides and hyperlink there. I'm going to add a square to this template, select the paintbrush, and then fill. Under fill, I want to select no fill, and I'm going to use this square to add all of my hyperlinks to the planner. Now what I'm going to do is use this square to cover every place that I want to add a hyperlink. So I'm going to add this over July, and then I'm going to copy it and place it over each one of the words for my tabs at the bottom. Before we start adding the links to the pages for our hyperlinks, I'm going to go back and check the page numbers. So you're going to select done and that takes you back out to the planner pages that we have set up. So I'm just clicking through and checking the pages like my calendar is page one. So I want to link July to page one. And the rest of the pages are pretty much in order. So I'm just going to continue down the list. Once you've added all the hyperlinks, if you click done again and come out of the master pages, you'll notice when you click through the pages on your planner layout, the hyperlinks have been added to all the pages except for the weekly layout. This is why using the master slides to do your hyperlinks is important. It cuts down on the hyperlinking time. So you just had to hyperlink that one page and it went to the three pages in your planner. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to lock the bar, the black bar, and I'm also going to lock the words or the text that I have down for our tabs. And then I'm going to select all and copy. To do this, I'm just going to select one of the boxes on the toolbar and in the pop-up, I'm going to select select objects. Once that pops up, I'm just going to use my Apple Pencil and go across the bar and it's going to select all the boxes and then select done and then copy from the pop-up toolbar. Now I'm going to go to the weekly template and I'm going to paste what we just copied. Just tap anywhere on this page and you'll get a pop-up toolbar. Select paste in the toolbar and then you'll notice all of the hyperlinks are added to the toolbar on this page. Now when you close out of the master slide section, all of the templates should have the hyperlinks on the toolbar. I'm also going to add a hyperlink to the weeks on the calendar to jump to the weekly templates. 
I just have to create another unfilled box and add them to the corners at the beginning of the rows. If you want to create daily templates and link them, it would be the same process. Create the unfilled boxes and add one over each day and then link each box to the correct daily page. To check your hyperlinks before you export, select the hyperlink and then select go to slide to make sure it's going to the right destination. Now I'm going to go back to the master slides and I'm going to create a quick cover for the planner. I'm going to use the blank template and I'm going to label it cover. Tap on the page and in the pop-up toolbar select select objects. At the very bottom of the page you want to select select all and then delete. To delete the text and the strip, we're going to have to unlock those and then delete. Now I'm just going to change the background color to a gray and use some font to write in July Planner. You can get as creative as you want with your cover page and you can use the plus sign to import any photos that you want to use on your cover. Now I'm going to close out the master slides and go add the cover to the planner pages. I'm going to select the plus sign and then select the cover. Once I have it added, I'm just going to hold on it and drag it to the top so it's the first page of the planner. You can use the play button at the top to view the pages in your planner. Once you've checked the page order of your planner and checked your hyperlinks and you're ready to export, then you're going to select the presentation at the top and we're going to rename it so that the file has the name that you want when you export it. Once you've named your planner, select the drop down again and this time go to export. When you get the export option, you want to select PDF. You want to make sure the first box is checked and then everything is toggled off except for include background. Select export and then from here you can save it to your files, but I'm going to open mine in GoodNotes. I'm going to import it as a new document and now go through the planner and check to make sure my hyperlinks work like they're supposed to. And once you've checked your planner and everything's working like it's supposed to, you're good to go. You've created your own digital planner to use in GoodNotes. Let me know in the comments if you decide to give this a try and if you found this tutorial helpful. Alright y'all, till next time.